Hello. Uh, welcome to the Apple Training Institute webinar. Um, I'm Susie Bruce. I'm director of the Gordy Center for Substance Abuse Prevention at the University of Virginia. And I'm Holly Deering, and I'm the Apple Training Institute program manager. So thank you all for being here. Uh, we want to be respectful of your time. And so we're going to cover um, some basic information. It looks like a lot of folks um, are new to the Apple Training Institute. I think we may have a returner or two here. Um, we're going to cover some basic information about building your team, what to expect um, at the Institute. Um, we are recording this. And we will have the slides um, available on the Apple uh, Training Institute website um, following the webinar. So if you've got folks uh, from your campus that weren't able to participate live with us, they'll be able to re review the information later. And that's always one of the first questions is, can I have copies of the slides? So just to give you a little bit of background. Um, if you're not familiar with Apple, um, it's actually been around for a while, but we just celebrated our 25th year last year, um, or in January. And the model is, uh, was created at the University of Virginia by Dr. Susan Grossman and Joe Geek. And they really looked around and realized there wasn't a prevention model around substance abuse that was specific and unique to the athletics culture and to um, the stressors and environment um, of student athletes. So they created this model and worked with the NCA to secure funding. And so we are very grateful that the NCA has seen value in this. And they have funded uh, about 90% of the cost of the conference um, in our training institute every year. We have two of these every year in January. Um, last year, we were excited. Uh, Division two of the NCAA uh, gave us funding to have a Division two only um, institute, and we'll be doing that again in, in the fall of 2017. So for those of you that maybe were familiar, at least even if you haven't been to our training institute before, you hear us talking about training institute and not conference. So we uh, made a name change this summer. Um, it's really nothing about the weekend particularly changes, but we realized there was still confusion about um, conference that seems to indicate, oh, you can stop in and out, and you can sort of do a lot of a la carte. And we realized we really are a training institute. We have faculty. We have set curriculum. Um, and we kind of hand pick um, what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be focusing on. And so our name really better reflects what we have been doing really since the very beginning. So. Uh, we want to thank our partners, clearly. We are here at the University of Virginia, so the support we receive from our institution for over 25 years uh, implementing these and supporting schools. Of course, the NCAA, we have over half of all member schools have attended one of the training institutes over 25 years. And as I mentioned, they, they provide about 90% of the funding, which is why it's been so successful that schools really uh, just have to travel to one of the two locations and everything else is covered as part of your very minimal registration fee. And our other um, co-sponsors, educational partners, really provide a lot of support. Um, and we help you sort of select some of the best that's out there for prevention. So what to expect? What are the goals? Why do we even have this whole training institute, this model? Well, the first is you're going to learn a lot over the course of the weekend. Um, we're going to be specifically focusing on best practices for prevention work. Uh, empowerment in particular for our student athletes. Um, sometimes the student athletes feel like they're just told what to do. They show up. They have to get there. And our whole focus is we want to hear that student athlete voice. And they will definitely leave empowered. Um, and then, of course, over the course of the weekend and the next year, we will be uh, working with you to, to create your own action plan. And then we'll be providing support to you over the course of the year. So our institute um, focuses on helping you understand your strengths and weaknesses, uh, lots of networking both with other campuses but also some national experts. Uh, we're going to put forward um, best practices for policies, 
uh, just learning different educational approaches that maybe you haven't tried before, you've heard about, you, you get to dig in depth a little bit more. Um, and the big thing is you are really going to work <laughs> over this weekend. You will go back to your campus. Before you leave, you'll have an action plan with details in place. Um, and then we'll be here to support you over the course of the year. But that is your goal, is you will leave with an action plan customized to your institution. We have a set of learning outcomes. I'm not going to read all of these to you. But we know <clears throat> over the course of these 25 years, we assess these before the conference, after the conference with every uh, participant, and as well as at our two follow-ups with our team contacts. So we know these are the outcomes. These are the things that participants learn um, throughout the weekend. So here is um, the Apple model. We'll be obviously providing a lot of detail about the best practices and guiding principles for each area. But the main idea about this is that it's a comprehensive approach to prevention. You'll see the very first thing is recruitment. So before you even have a student athlete as part of your department, what are you doing? What kind of messages about your expectations and attitudes, those kind of hidden messages that are being sent out and the kinds of student athletes that you're attracting? And then once they're on your campus, what do you have in place? Your policies and education, um, drug testing, although that's not a regular part of every division, certainly for championship. How are you doing that? What's the role? Um, and then what happens when someone you know, violates policy? What kind of sanctioning and referral and counseling for anyone who may have a substance uh, use issue? So we'll cover that in great detail um, at the conference, but that just kind of provides an overview. So the next step of the process is now that you've signed up, and congratulations, you got a spot because we just filled up today and we're on a wait list, um, is preparing for Apple and getting ready to attend. So first things first is you need to build your team. And as you know, you need to bring at least four, but no more than six members. And two of them must be student athletes. Now, other people can include administrators, athletic trainers. Um, it can also be student affairs professionals. These folks do not need to work within your athletics department. In fact, this is a great opportunity to reach out to your wellness folks, your um, alcohol and prevention folks, as well as maybe there's someone in housing or Greek life, depending on your campus. So um, we don't limit the type of person that can come, but at least two must be student athletes. And we want you to look at providing a great amount of perspective and diversity to your team. So think about the gender you're bringing, ethnicity, what athletics teams are represented at the time. All this registration must be completed by November 11th. All team contacts have a link to registration. And if you need, um, if you can't find it anymore, feel free to email us. And we'll have that information at the end. We also go and confirm team rosters in November. And this is really important, A, so you know as a team contact who on your team has registered, because sometimes someone hasn't. You thought they did. And then also it confirms for us if you're only bringing four um, instead of six. We can sometimes finagle the numbers and get some schools off our wait list. So it's really important that you um, get that email and then confirm with us, yep, that's our team, or oh, wait, we've got one more coming. Um, some questions were frequently asked are, are there requirements for student athletes? And we don't have any set requirements. Um, we encourage folks to not necessarily bring all seniors that are graduating. Um, this is, as Susie said, you're going to be creating an action plan. So this is, uh, theoretically, it will extend over the course of the academic, throughout the academic year and then into the fall. So having a team that has a lot of seniors that are graduating, um, sometimes you're not setting yourself up for tremendous success because they're going to leave. Um, certainly they are allowed, but it's just something to consider when you're thinking about it. And then the other question we get asked is, what if the team member drops out? You know, sometimes people take a new job or a student athlete suddenly has practice or surgery that they didn't anticipate. Um, we can certainly swap people out. You need to let Holly, or that's me, or Katie <laughs> know of any changes to your roster. Um, as soon as you can. And we really prefer that you replace an individual with another individual. So for instance, um, of the same role. So if a male student athlete suddenly isn't able to come, it is far easier for us to swap that out with another male student athlete. Certainly we can accommodate other things, but that is um, our easiest swap, is body for body, so to speak. Um, but we understand that these things do happen, especially when you have to register by mid-November. 
The other thing you should have received in your confirmation email is the athletics department baseline assessment. Um, this is really at the core um, of what we do at Apple and it's a key critical component and it's designed to meet your compliance with our standards and so it is a long assessment, we're not going to lie, it's long, um, and which is why we sent you a PDF version of it for you to print it out, take a look, meet with other people in your department to figure out do we have a policy on this, how are we addressing this Doug testing, what are we doing in these different different areas and it walks you through our seven slices of the apple. Um, take that information, complete it online by November 11th and then we will be uh, giving you at the institute a um, confidential report that shows your score. Um, and so don't worry if this is your first time coming and these are things you haven't thought of and you know, you're thinking, oh dear, we're not going to get a good score. That's okay. No one knows your score but me and I promise not to tell. And you know, it just shows that this is a good starting point. Almost all of the conversations on Saturday morning are really based on this assessment. So it's really important that you all take the time to get it done and, and be as comprehensive as you can with the information. We also, as Susie mentioned, this is a time to share. Um, Apple is all about um, the idea that you don't need to reinvent the wheel. We are all doing prevention work of some form or another and we all have really great ideas. And so we are providing an opportunity for schools to present on their own things, projects they've been doing. In particular, emphasis to schools that have um, created things from their previous Apple action plans. But if you have something at your school that you're doing, we would love to hear about it. Team Contacts also have a link to this. The applications are due on November 11th and these can be either a poster session or it could be as simple as we have these rotating 30 minute sessions that can be even split in two. So if the idea of just presenting for 10 minutes, that seems like a manageable chunk and a great experience for your student athletes. By now you've registered and you know which uh, training institute you're attending, but just a reminder, Charlottesville is January 13th through 15th, we're at the Double Tree. Our lovely local airport that is preciously small is four miles away and we have free parking at the hotel and there is a free airport shuttle. If you are going to Nashville, that's January 20th through 22nd and that is also the Double Tree and that is downtown. So the Nashville airport is eight miles away. So please keep in mind on Friday that you're coming into a big city and there's traffic to contend with, so plan accordingly. Uh, parking is not um, something we could negotiate down. So um, it is run by a separate company and it is $35 a night. So plan accordingly um, with your budgets if you are coming to Nashville and driving. Uh, as our, with our both hotels, with our grant, it is shared double occupancy hotel rooms and what that means is that um, it is covered for you to have a roommate and you can indicate your roommate preference on our individual registration process. You can get a single room for an additional cost. Now if you have someone on your team who does not have a roommate but doesn't want to pay the single room fee, don't fret. We do. Um, a roommate matching process so we would put another female student athlete with another female student athlete and male administrator with another male administrator and we even take the time to see what sport do they play, what job do they have, you know, what part of the country do they live in to just find that extra little touch point of commonality um, and so when we do roommates, if you have a student athlete or someone who's like, oh, I'm not sure about rooming with someone, I don't know, um, it's, we really do our best to try to pair someone with um, someone who will hopefully be a good match for two days. Uh, the other thing too is we do not confirm um, roommate selection until you get to the hotel only because last minute changes can occur but we would really do our best to honor requests. There is free Wi-Fi in the meeting spaces and guest rooms. We are our athletic facilities. Uh, the other thing of note is that each person needs to provide that debit or credit card to cover incidental. So all of the master bill has the rooms but if someone were to get a movie or room service that is not something paid for by Apple. Um, no charge gets put on the card initially, it's just if there's any incident those cards uh, charged at the time of Apple. And as we said before, we are your one-stop shop and we make all hotel arrangements. So if you need a single or if you have any sort of questions at all, don't contact the hotel, contact us and we will make any arrangements that you need. We understand that student athletes like to eat and eat a lot of food. So we have meals that are all buffet style starting with Friday night dinner through Sunday breakfast. We are providing snacks on Saturday afternoon but it certainly wouldn't hurt for folks to throw an extra granola bar in their bag. Um, 
We ask that you indicate your dietary needs on the registration forms. We do try to provide buffets that accommodate a wide variety of dietary needs and issues, but certainly there are times that we have to have the chef make um, a meal just for that person. So we can accommodate whatever you need. Just make sure it's all written down and we can do our best. So then the next question is often, well, what do I bring and what do I wear? So dress is pretty casual for the sessions, khakis and jeans, certainly wear your school spirit gear. Um, both hotels have pools, so feel free and hot tubs to pack a swimsuit. We will be doing a t-shirt swap. It's an annual tradition we have. We'll be doing it on Saturday night. And we ask the team members bring a new campus t-shirt. This is not required, but certainly something fun if people want to participate in. You don't need to go out and buy a new shirt. Um, some schools have often gone to their equipment room and said, hey, do you have any extras lying around? Or if you had an event where you have some extra t-shirts, that's a great thing to do. You could also ask the bookstore maybe to donate a shirt or two, saying that you're going to a substance abuse prevention conference. Sometimes that can get some some good donations in there. But there's a lot of creative ways to find, if you don't have in your budget to buy a new shirt, um, there are creative ways to find it. We do provide notebooks and pens because we want people to take notes. And, and it's always helpful that at least one individual have a laptop or an iPad because our action plans and evaluations are all done online. Okay. So what happens when you're actually at Apple? Hopefully you see that it looks like it's a lot of fun. So starting off um, with our check-in, do you know that there are two separate check-ins, um, one with the hotel um, for your room, and then a separate check-in um, with our Apple staff. And there we are, one of our lovely check-in tables in Charlottesville. Every single person must check-in at our training institute table, so our comp the actual check-in with us. So if you're the team contact, um, some of these people are like, oh, everyone's getting up to their room. Can I get all six people's stuff? And unfortunately, the answer is no. And the reason for that is, remember, we talked about those learning outcomes and that we assess those. Well, one of the ways we make sure we get a pretest from every single person is you don't get all your cool swag, um, the bags, the t-shirts, everything else, until we get your pretest. It's really short. It's one page. It doesn't take any time at all. But that allows us to make sure we get pretest data on everyone and continue to show the value of our um, training institute. A few other things that you'll, you can expect um, throughout the weekend. We do evaluate every session. Um, we are continually working to improve and make this really the best training institute, um, I will say, in the country, especially around substance abuse and um, athletics. And our evaluations um, really reflect that and how much attention we pay to really improving this continually. Uh, we will do the post-test before uh, you leave. Um, we have team photos. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. And of course, throughout the weekend, you'll have a great opportunity to network. So a little bit about what to expect. Um, our Apple faculty, um, Joe Geek, and I will be leading some of our main sessions about the Apple model, um, leading the team meetings um, in a general sense. And then we have um, sort of hand-picked experts to talk about a variety of health and wellness issues uh, throughout the weekend. So you have a lot of great op opportunities, both in general sessions and our breakouts. So unique, um, both to our Virginia Institute um, and the first time we've really done this um, with Apple, is to do a facilitator training in the Step Up by Standard Intervention model. If you're not familiar with that, um, it is uh, a general bystander intervention program. So it's not unique to uh, sexual assault or interpersonal violence. It really addresses a range of behaviors and was originally developed for a student athlete population at the University of Arizona. The NCAA has endorsed this. Um, and every other year, we have a facilitator uh, training. Uh, the last one was May of this year. So we realized there's not going to be one for two years. And so we, we kind of tried this out uh, in Charlottesville. So we have room for about 50 participants. Um, we're about halfway full right now. So if you are interested, um, it will allow you to then be trained as a facilitator and you'll have all the information and a good skill set to go out and lead these kinds of trainings back on your campus. So the cost is 
$50 for your school, not per individual. We do require that you have at least two of your current Apple team members attend. We feel that if you have just one person, then you're kind of the island of information. And it's a lot easier uh, to make change if there's two of you. So you could have your entire team of six if you like, but you have to have at least two. And that $50 fee covers up to six people. Um, we will have hotel rooms for you on Thursday night. Um, as well as breakfast and lunch, knowing that dinner starts for everyone um, that evening and then all of your training materials. Friday night, uh, registration uh, with our staff is 2 to 4. Uh, and as we said, everyone has to check in. Uh, dinner starts at 5.15. We know that sometimes travel can be challenging <laughs> and things happen and flights get delayed and you miss a connection. So please make sure you have that Apple Org um, email and you've got the contact information. We'll send an email to the team contact in that week before uh, the institute you're attending. With that last minute, if you've got a change, uh, to let us know. Uh, you will get dinner. We will work something out. Um, but it just really helps us plan to know if a school is going to be coming late and about when they're, they're attending so we can work with the hotel. Saturday, um, we will learn more about the Apple model. We actually have the whole morning kind of set aside to look at each of those seven slices and have longer team meetings. So, so for those of you that are returning, we got feedback that people did not have enough time in the morning. So we've extended the time where you'll be meeting as a team um, so that you really get in depth and have enough time to truly plan um, a customized action plan for your campus. Uh, in the afternoon, we have breakout sessions. We're going back to what we tried out last year. We had really good response to these short sessions that are about 30 minutes long, and then all of those sessions will repeat. You'll have more meetings um, to create your action plan, and then great dinner and some networking time. You mentioned team photos. You can see how much fun people have. Uh, we do take a picture of every team um, Friday and Saturday. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's a great way to remember um, the weekend. You get a copy of that. You get a hard copy and a frame um, when you turn in your action plan on Sunday. And then we'll also send you an electronic copy of your team photo. And we will track you down if you haven't gotten your team photo done in time. <laughs> then Sunday, our half day, uh, we will be sharing action plans. We'll break up into the three divisions. So you'll have an opportunity, again, to network with schools within your division on what you're doing and gain some ideas. Linda Hancock is going to give a great session on mindfulness to kind of head us um, out on the road in a good mindset. Remember, as soon as those action plans, those are electronic, so we just need you to have one person with some form of electronic um, device that will allow you to access that. And then there's the post-test and overall conference evaluation. So as we said, after Apple, this is not just a, a weekend event. Hopefully this is kind of a, a bigger commitment for you and your university uh, to making change and making a difference. So what does that mean? Well, there is an expectation that your Apple team continues to meet to implement that amazing action plan that you all created at the Institute. And we highly encourage you to think about who else can join um, your team after the fact when you're back on your campus. So there, limited to clearly to four to six people, but there's other people that maybe couldn't make it, or as you're thinking about um, your campus collaborations, this is a great chance afterwards to bring them into your plan. Uh, we do also more assessment um, back in March and again in October. This is just for team contacts. It's only five minutes quick survey just to check in how is it going what barriers have you encountered? What are some of the successes you have had? And we use all this information at the Institute and in reports to the NCAA. Um, so we really um, value the feedback that we receive. And then, of course, keeping our staff informed of any changes. If you are the team contact and then you get another job somewhere else, fabulous. Um, we hate that you're leaving, but we would like to know um, who's the next person we should talk to, um, assuming that and hoping that your Apple action plan continues and your team continues to meet who's the new person in charge. So we do have some advice from past team contacts, um, just for new folks in particular, of how to prepare and how to really be ready for this. And the biggest thing that they've said is, is having this open mind and really listening to your student athletes. We begin the institute with two sessions, one with just student athletes and one with administrators. And in that student athlete session, I tell them, look, you need to speak. You are a voice here that is 
very valued and you need to speak up and don't be afraid. Like we want to know what you are doing, what are you seeing, what are the real issues going on. And it is a trust relationship and those administrators are being told that they need to listen and that it becomes a partnership here. And so it is really becomes truly this partnership and it's about listening and really empowering those student athletes. And again, encouraging about change. Sometimes people get a little overwhelmed when they really stop and think of all that needs to be done around alcohol and substance abuse issues. And clearly it's not going to get done in a year and it's not going to be, um, everything isn't going to be magically fabulous after, you know, um, one Apple conference and one action plan or else. I don't know, I guess we wouldn't have jobs. So, you know, the little change can make a difference. Big change can make a difference. So the things we leave you with today is to remember the date of November 11th. We tried to keep it simple this year. Um, all the individual team member registration is due that day. Your athletics department baseline assessment. Any program proposals, and if you're thinking about coming to the Step Up Bystander Training, we want all of those turned in by November 11th. And then in theory, You've done all the hard work and you get to sit back and I'd say relax, but we have one last thing for you to do. So setting yourself up for success. So now that you've assembled your team after November 11th, we really encourage you to schedule a team meeting prior to the institute to talk about expectations, to talk about the format. You can review um, either the slides or, you know, if we can get it right, the audio um, from this webinar. You can ask us questions, but it's really helpful and we're going to send out the agenda in December to help folks prepare so that people are on the same page and they know what to expect. We also want you to hopefully issue some light homework, nothing intense, but just having the people in your team ask five other people in the athletic department or on your campus, what are the biggest issues surrounding alcohol and drugs in our athletics department? Because a lot of times we think it's one thing, and, and it probably is, um, but the student athletes might have a different impression or, you know, your athletic trainers might be like, oh, but we're seeing X, Y, and Z. And so clearly you're limited with only four to six people, but who else? What are they seeing on your campus? What's going on? And the better, um, idea you have of that can really help and enhance your discussions at Apple. And so we really want to emphasize the team meeting because it's really important to review the purpose and what to expect because a lot of times we do have new schools and new folks who um, haven't come before and they get there and they look a little deer in headlights like, wait, what? We're doing an action plan. Wait, what? What's happening? Um, so the best thing you can do to really set yourself up for for success from day one is to have a, a meeting in advance to just kind of start to get on the same page um, and just kind of review what's going on. Some of you, your meeting might be on your 12-hour van ride. Um, others of you, it might be certainly in December or in early January. But it really helps you um, set yourself up, like we said, for success. So now we're going to turn it over to you and see if you have any questions. Um, you can type it into the chat portion at the bottom. And certainly, and we'll do our best to answer them. And then, of course, um, so we'll pause for a moment and allow for any questions. And as a reminder, we will post um, all of these slides up on the um, Apple website. Um, we're going to work on getting the audio. We're recording it. So we're hopefully be able to get the, all of that together. But at a minimum, um, all of these will be available. So if you have other team members who weren't able to participate today, um, you can get that out to them so that uh, folks are feeling a little more prepared. So how long should we plan for step up training sessions for teams on campus? So if you're actually um, leading those. So step up can be done. It's a little tight if you are training your teams in about an hour. In an ideal world, you'd have 90 minutes. But in the real world, um, <laughs> we know that sometimes all you can get is, is 60 minutes. Um, it's designed to be tight to be 60 minutes. We do have schools. Um, that will do the core training. And then there's all these different topics. There's, I think, 20 different topics that then you could use the basic bystander piece with. So then you could have shorter, maybe half hour sessions, maybe one on hazing and one on alcohol. Um, and so you could have a math training at the beginning of the year. And then you could have sort of team specific follow ups. <laughs> Okay, it says, we heard <laughs> the Earlham team loves Apple more than any other D3 college. Is this true? Um, 
<laughs> well, our laughter. I, I don't want to start. We know you wrote that. Hey, Laura. Um, so, okay. We don't have any, um, any evaluation data on that. But we love all of our schools that come to us. Yeah. Not so many schools love us. And we love them. Actually, our favorite part about the about the whole weekend is just getting to meet all of you and hearing about the fantastic things you're doing on your campus. Um, and even if you're feeling like, oh, we have so much work, just remember someone in your department has authorized you to come. So you have support. Um, and the fact that you're there, we will, we're going to help you and do all we can to help you build on the strengths um, that are already existing in your department. Well, that might be a good question to end on. But um, so if you have any other questions after the webinar, um, you can email me at appleathletics at virginia.edu or um, Katie, our wonderful, fabulous graduate assistant. And you can call us at any time. And our number's there. And then you can also go to our beautiful, brand new website, appleathletics.org. Um, we got a question. When finalizing the team for the Training Institute, is it better to have more students or administrators? I think most people who have come before would probably say more students. Um, I've heard that from people that have said, well, you know, the first year we came, we brought two students and four administrators, and then we went, uh-oh. Because the students are the ones that are really going to make the change. You certainly need the administrators because you need to be able to navigate the system and the politics and, and you know, let's face it, we have resources and expertise. But um, if the more students you can bring, uh, sometimes the better. And so the, some teams have shifted over the years that they start to bring four students or even five students. So on average, we have about 60% of the participants at each uh, weekend will be student athletes. Yes. And while I know it can be a hard sell, I had our UVA students say, you know, like, oh gosh, I was not looking forward to a whole weekend talking about alcohol and drugs. But guess what? That was actually a lot better than I thought. And you know, I, I thanked them for that comment. And um, and they were like, that was actually fun. I liked it. So I think the students that come, they get to know each other really well, and they have fun, and, and they're all in the same boat together. So the more you can bring, I think sometimes the better. It's what will create the best team for your school. Um, and it might be initially, if you're planning on coming, hopefully for multiple years, it might be you need a few more administrators that first year to get that buy-in um, and that support, and then slowly getting the students in. Let's see if we have any other questions. But like we said, anytime you can call or email us. We've gotten all sorts of questions over the years. so. Um, Keep throwing them at us. Don't be afraid to call and say, I'm confused, or help me understand this, or what was this again? Um, we are always here to help you and support you both before and after uh, the Institute to get you through and to help you be successful. And as we mentioned, we have a lot of information on that website. So if you haven't checked it out, um, you'll see a lot more. We actually have agendas from previous um, uh, training institutes, back when they were conferences. <laughs> uh, so there's information on there that, again, if you're brand new, um, that may help give you a better sense of what's going to happen. It might be good to uh, share with uh, your other teammates. And we also added an FAQ page, so that might help with the questions that we really do get asked the most. So, but anytime, don't hesitate to ever contact us with questions. So we just want to thank you all for your for attending today and we look forward to meeting everyone in January. Yeah. We like to keep it short and sweet. Thanks so much. And we'll see you in a couple months.